I'm back with more of the best free 3D prints to help organize your life. If you're looking for something handy to 3D print at home, then look no further. This is a follow-up to Organizational Prints Part 1, as well as 3D Printed Tools Parts 1 and 2, all linked below in the description. Everything you're going to see in this video is free, easy to put together, and doesn't require any specialist tools or assembly. Let's go. Last time, we started with objects for the office, and we're going to do the same here. Now, I don't have any need for business cards, but if I did, I'd want a good way to display them and 3D printing offers the opportunity for something different. Let's start with this business card holder by Dantec. No support is needed, and at first I was trying to print this model inverted, but I found the small surfaces touching the bed would peel off and warp the print. Instead, I would recommend printing it the way it comes, but turning on a brim. For me, this is a simple, elegant, and interesting design, holding two stacks of business cards, and it looks great when you hide the layer lines with something like this X3D stone filament. I like with this design how the corner of each stack sits clear of the other stack for easy grabbing. But we can go even more dynamic with this business card holder by Julius Fred. It's not mentioned here, but this is a 10 segrity structure, which means the top half appears to float in midair on strings. These are all the parts that you need, plus some string and perhaps some super glue. And again, I chose some X3D marble PLA to hide any layer lines. These parts do slot together, but I found them a little bit loose to hold themselves up without the super glue to keep things permanent. I didn't have any thin string, so instead I used fishing line, which worked just fine. One thing I would recommend is cutting each length oversize at least 10 centimeters, because I later discovered it's easy to trim the excess. I think it's best to spread the line through the little holders, pushing it through so much that it can curl around the top and have a short length protruding out. Then before the glue dries, you can pull it tighter or looser and then simply trim off the excess when you're done. But unfortunately, I cut most of mine too short, and that means I needed a more elaborate solution to hold everything in place and get the lengths close. Fortunately for me, even though I didn't get all of my corner lengths to match, the top half still works floating magically in space. Just something a little bit different and novel that you probably won't find in a shop to display your business cards. Maybe your office is a bit echoey and you need some acoustic panels. But until now, I didn't realize just how expensive they can be. Enter a 3D printed solution by Widgets with these sound diffusion panels. And as the title suggests, they come in both square and hexagon shapes. I opted for the square and you're actually meant to print this up on its side in vase mode. I added a brim for extra bed holding and I opted for a gradient filament to enhance the aesthetics. Personally, I think these are such a cool shape and this time lapse is mesmerizing. The finished panels look very cool and I love the way they reflect the light and shadows coming from different angles. Because it's in vase mode, the rear surface is not exactly flat. But I don't think this will be a problem once they're stuck up on a wall. If you're printing out multiples, the pattern does repeat so you can use them in continuation or in a space tile pattern as shown on printables. And that's exactly what I've done, mounting to the left of my editing computer. Now let's look at some items that apply both at the office as well as at home. You might have a bunch of keys that look alike and need organization. We have 3D printed systems for that purpose, like this universal key cover by Phil Caruso. For each key, you're going to need a bottom, and there's only one part to choose from. You're going to need a top, and there's some pre-made ones with labels, and then finally an insert, with cutouts for various type keys. If you want the top label to have colored text, there's a couple of options. You can do a mid-print filament change, which I covered in detail in this recent Hue Forge tutorial, or you can just print the whole thing in a light color and use a Sharpie to color in the raised sections. Assembly is pretty straightforward. We put our insert into the base, our key into the insert, and then we insert our top from the key side, sliding it in until it clips into place. And if you need to change the key or label later on, you can easily pry it back open. This is a clever system for keeping things organized. And if you find you have some unusual keys that don't really fit any of the supplied inserts, step files are provided so you can create your own remix. Doing a similar job but with a very different style are these Imperial key covers by Lantana. Obviously we have a large hollow overhang inside and the instructions call for automatic tree supports from the build plate only, which when combined with another filament change mid-print gives a pretty clean result. Our first job after printing is to remove those organic supports. 
A narrow pointy tool is very helpful here, as this will also allow you to scrape out any loose filament on the inside of the cavity. After that, the keys just slide right in. And this design doesn't have labels, but you should be able to tell them apart on your keyring. The only caveat is it only suits round keys, and that the Stormtrooper design might cover too much of the key if the key is short. Let's talk about loose cables, something that will unfortunately be a problem in many locations. We're going to start with a versatile set of cable clips by BQ3. We have the Clamor as well as the Clipped. Each has similarities, but there's also one important difference. On the left, we have the Clamor, and there's no hole in the bottom, which means it's designed to be used with double-sided tape. On the right, we have the Clipped. This one's designed to be used in locations where you want to screw in this little silver fitting because you're looking for more strength in the junction. Each design also comes with two versions of the internals, one with dividers and one without. Each design also comes with three different lengths, narrow, medium, and wide. A lot of versatility here, so let's apply them to some different scenarios. I'm starting in the bathroom and I want to tidy up the cables for these electric toothbrushes. Obviously, I'm not going to be drilling into the tiles here, so I'm going to use the clamor, printed in white with some double-sided tape on the back. I can now stick the cable clips to the wall and put the cords through the middle. Here's the before and here's the after. It's subtle, but it is an improvement and a little bit tidier thanks to some 3D printed parts. Next up, let's do something about these cables on my office desk. I have no problem drilling holes on the underside of this desk, so I'm going to use the clipped here. After drilling a pilot hole for the screw, I can then screw the base into position. The cable clip portion will then slot over this. The cable can be fed through the opening and clipped shut. In most situations, you're going to need more than one clip. So here I read a series, mostly along the top, to hold the cables out of sight. So that's half the job done, but once we reintroduce the 3D printer, the power wire is far too long for this spot and I'd like to tidy this up too. For this task, I've chosen this cable organizer by Nordheim. This is a nice and simple design with two parts. The part in black here, you wrap the cord around, and then you have the cover to keep everything concealed. So after planning a location, including taking into account the slots where the cable comes in and out, I once again drilled some short pilot holes and then fixed the base in place with some self-tapping screws. Once more, a little bit of planning will help you here as you need to wrap the excess cord around the base, making sure it can enter and exit in the right direction. We then align the cable going in and out with the slots in the cover and push it through until it clicks into position. Here's another before and after comparison. And with these two cable management parts working together, everything is looking so much tidier. We're now focused on the wet areas like the kitchen, laundry, or bathroom. If someone in your household has long hair, you're probably going to want one of these. This is a robust drain snake by Galactic. This is an easy print and should be done in PETG, so it has a certain amount of flex without being brittle and breaking. Now that I've got it, let's go hunting for treasures. Sink number one is used by myself and my wife, and to be honest, there's only your standard issue gunk here, nothing particularly special. Sink number two is used by my kids, and it was a lot more generous. See these long tangled hairs coming out here? Well, normally we only realize they're a problem when they build up so much that they block the drain, and then we have to rely on nasty chemicals to dissolve them. Hopefully now, with this simple 3D printed piece, we can do a quick bit of maintenance and keep the drains hair free. A common item that breaks or goes missing is a clothes peg. And if you're running short, this version by Tavorum 3D is quick, easy, and effective. There's two components, one of which is printed twice without any support. These two go together symmetrically, and then we get the final component, the spring clip, and push it in from the opening, pushing it further and further until it clips into position. And that's all you need for a replacement clothes peg. It feels exactly like one with a metal spring, and it's got plenty of gripping power. If you need a lot, you'll probably still buy a packet, but if you're only short a small amount, this is an excellent alternative. How about this gravity broom holder by Lobo CNC, a competition winner and for good reason. Its job is simple, but it does it in a novel and stylish way. We've got this straw broom that sits on our back deck, but anytime they're let out, it doesn't take very long for Brett and Jermaine to find it and try to chew it, so I need a miniature goat proof solution for storing it. So I printed the three hole version of the base, again in stone effect PLA, and then the gear in orange, so it's easy to spot if it's ever dislodged. But you needn't not worry about that, because I wasn't sure if it would stay in, but it absolutely does. If your broom has a slippery handle, you can use rubber bands or an O-ring like I'm doing here, and that will give the mechanism just a little bit more grip. So I screwed the base to the wall, fairly high up, 
and that will allow me to store the broom inverted so the bristles aren't anywhere near the hungry goats. You might think this is awkward to use, but you only need one hand. We simply lift up and pull out to remove, and putting it back in is a reverse. You push the gear up and then gravity pulls it down, clamping the broom in place. We finish by adding some organization in the car. This hook for a car seat by Capsule 22 is deceptively simple, but also very effective. If you live anywhere where the inside of your car will get hot, you're going to want at least PTG, but apart from that, there's no special considerations for this print. Installation is very simple. We simply press the button to completely remove the headrest and then reinstall the headrest with the hook in position. This will be plenty strong, but also very quick to remove if we ever need to. We now have another place to store a bag where it can't spill open and lose its contents on the floor. This is just one, but on many cars, you could have a lot of these installed for a lot of carrying capacity. Lucky last, a very simple idea that makes so much sense. These trunk Velcro holders by David D. There's two variations here, but I only printed the one that hinges. No assembly required because this is print in place. And I used my printer with a fat nozzle, therefore mine was a little bit stiffer, but I was able to break it free and get it completely functional. To use this, you're going to need some adhesive backed Velcro or a generic equivalent, but you will only need the side with the hooks. Cut some strips to length and stick them on the underside of the printed parts. And that's all you need to do before they're ready to store in the car. Let's say you've got a box of delicate goods that you don't want sliding around. We can put it in the corner and then use these printed holders to retain it there. Obviously, we can add as many as we need to keep things in place. And I was pleasantly surprised just how strong they are, which should ensure your cargo no longer slides around the inside of your car. That's all I've got for now. Let me know what you're going to print out of these and also let me know any winners that I might have missed. Thank you to the designers of all these great items for making them free. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy organizational 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.